Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use a for loop in C Sharp. Now, a for loop is a special type of loop which allows us to keep track of what's called an iterating variable. And basically, this is just a variable that's going to change every time we go through our loop. So basically, it's a, it's kind of a situation where we have a variable, and generally, that variable will like keep track of how many times we've gone through the loop or it can keep track of other things, but it's sort of a special scenario in our programs where we wanna use a loop, but we wanna have a variable that's going to be changing or doing something every time we go through that loop. And this is actually really easy to understand. I'm just gonna show you guys real quick this example that I have down here. You'll notice that I have a simple while loop. So I said this integer i over here, I said equal to one, and I'm looping while i is less than or equal to five, right? This is a very simple while loop. And every time we go through the loop, I'm basically saying console.write line, I'm printing out i, and then I basically saying i plus plus. So a very simple loop. Um, and but you'll notice here when I run my program, and I'm gonna go ahead and run it right now, that I'm basically printing out this variable i every time I go through the loop. And you'll notice that the first time we go through the loop, i is equal to one. The second time we go through the loop, i is equal to two. The third time we go through the loop, i is equal to three. This variable i is constantly changing every time we go through the loop. And i is actually telling us what iteration of the loop we're currently on. This is pretty cool, right? This variable i is essentially keeping track of the times we've gone through the loop. And we can use this variable i to you know, print that out and to know where we're at in the execution of the while loop. Now, this is actually a very common situation. So a lot of times when we're writing loops in C sharp, we're gonna wanna have a variable just like i, a variable that's gonna change every time we go through the loop, right? In this case, i is changing every time it's getting incremented by one. So i is essentially telling us how many times we've gone through the loop. But you could essentially use this variable i to do anything. So Instead of just incrementing i by one, I could, inc I could increment it by two or I could increment it by another value. Um, basically, the idea here is that we have a variable that we're using constantly as we go through this loop. And it's such a common situation to have a variable like this that there's an entirely separate loop called a for loop, which is designed just for this situation. So down here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a for loop and I'll show you guys how this for loop is actually gonna be able to do exactly what this while loop is doing, but a lot cleaner and a lot simpler. To create a for loop, I'm just gonna say for, I'm gonna make an open and close parentheses and an open and close curly bracket. So, so far, this is exactly like this while loop, right? It's basically structured the same exact way. But you'll notice in the while loop, inside of the parentheses, I only put one thing, right? I put the loop condition. You'll hear people call this the loop guard, right? It's basically like the condition for when we should loop. Inside of this for loops parentheses, we're gonna put three different things. So instead of just having one thing, we're gonna put three things. And the first thing we're gonna put in here is a variable initialization. You'll notice up here in my while looping structure, I have this integer i, and over here I'm saying int i is equal to one. But this is actually outside of the while loop. So I had to do that separately from the actual while loop. Well, in a for loop, I can actually do this same thing inside of this parentheses. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it over here. And you'll notice I'm gonna leave this semicolon in. So the first thing I'm gonna do inside this for loop parentheses is I'm gonna initialize this variable i. Now, the next thing I want to do, and you'll notice I'm separating these two things with the semicolon, the next thing I want to do is write out my loop condition. So in the while loop, our loop condition is right here. You know what I mean? It's just i is less than or equal to five, whatever. It's basically like telling us how long we should loop for. I can just take this and I can put this as the second item inside of these parentheses. So now I'm able to take the variable initialization and the loop condition and finally, I'm gonna put another semicolon here and I'm gonna include one more thing over here. And this is gonna be a line of code that's gonna get executed every time we go through the for loop. Now, if you'll notice up here in this while loop, every time we go through this loop, we're doing something special to this variable. Every time we go through the while loop, we're incrementing i. And this is exactly what I wanna do over here in my parentheses. So the last spot inside of my parentheses over here, I'm just gonna put in i++. And like I said, this is just gonna be a line of code that's gonna get executed after every single iteration of our loop. 
So you'll basically see that I'm doing the same thing over here as I am over here, right? Over here, I'm defining this variable. I'm initializing this variable with a value. I'm doing that down here in the parentheses. Over here, I'm specifying a looping condition. I'm doing that down here in the parentheses. And then finally, down here, after every iteration of the loop, I'm incrementing i, and I'm able to do that over here in this third section. So basically, the for loop is just taking this situation where we want to have a variable that's going to you know, be used inside the loop, and it's compacting it into this one single structure. And so now, I could basically copy this line of code over here, paste it into the for loop, and now these loops are identical. So these loops are actually going to be doing the same exact thing. And I'm going to prove that to you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this while loop. And we only have the for loop now. And let's run our program and see what output we get. So I'm going to run the program. And you'll see we're getting the same exact output that we got before. We're getting one, two, three, four, five printed out. So this for loop is doing exactly what that while loop was doing. It's just it's a lot more compact, it's a lot easier to manage, and it's a lot better for us. So let me walk you guys real quick through how this gets executed. Essentially what happens is the first thing we do is we create this variable and we give it an initial value. The second thing we do is we check this condition. If the condition's true, then we're gonna execute all of the code inside of here. Once we're done executing all that code, then we're gonna go up here and increment i. Then we're gonna check the condition again. If it's true, we'll come back down here and we'll execute this code. Then again, we're coming back up here and we're gonna do that and then we check the condition again. So it's continuously looping through just like that. And this is the same as that while loop. So you could do what we're doing here with a while loop. It's just that it's a lot more convenient and a lot easier to do it with a for loop. So that's kind of the basics of a for loop. And before I end this tutorial, I wanna show you guys one cool thing we can do with these. Up here, I have this um, array that I created and I just kind of commented it out but I'm gonna copy it and bring it down here. And you'll notice this is just an array of lucky numbers. So it's just an integer array and I have these numbers in here. There's like four different numbers. I'm gonna show you guys how we can use a for loop in order to loop through and print out all of the elements inside of this array. So I just wanna remind you the way that we can access an individual element in an array is by saying the array's name and then referring to the index of that value. So if I said lucky number zero, this is referring to this four. If I said lucky numbers two, this is referring to this 15, right? Basically, that's how we can access an element inside of an array. If for loops are really useful. Remember, we have this indexing variable. So I can use a for loop to actually loop through and print out all of the elements inside of an array. So down here, so I actually wanna modify a couple of values. I'm gonna say int i, instead of setting it equal to one, I'm gonna set it equal to zero because array indexes start at zero. So this element is element zero inside of the array. Then I'm gonna change this condition. So instead of saying i less than or equal to five, I wanna say i less than or equal to lucky numbers dot length. So this is gonna allow me to access the length of the array. So when I say lucky numbers dot length, this is gonna tell me how many elements are inside of the array. Then down here, I'm gonna say console dot write line and I wanna print out lucky numbers i and the way this is going to work is the first time we go through this loop we're going to be printing out lucky numbers zero right because i is initially going to be zero so the first time we go through here we're basically printing out lucky number zero the second time we go through i gets incremented so we're going to be printing out lucky numbers one the third time we're going to be printing out lucky numbers two etc so we can use this for loop in order to loop through this array. And let me show you guys when I run this program. And actually, you know what, I forgot to modify one more thing. So instead of saying less than or equal to here, I'm just gonna say less than. And basically, since we're starting at zero, I wanna say i is less than lucky numbers dot length. That's because the length of the array is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. But the last element in the array is at index position five. So if I say i is less than or equal to lucky numbers dot length, then we're gonna be trying to access lucky numbers six at one point. But the last element is at lucky numbers five, so we have to say less than. So I'm gonna change this back to an i, and let's go ahead and run this, and you'll see that we'll be printing out all the elements inside of that array. So we're printing out four, eight, 15, 16, 23, 42. So that's one very common use of these for loops is you can use them to um, loop through all the elements inside of an array.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.